the biblical truth of our hymn. 47 so far. I was going to do Because He Lives. It's copyrighted. And the more I dug into Because He Lives, not the hymn, but the words, the people that wrote it and, and performed it, Southern Gospel and this uh, contemporary music and this vast other things and with the copyright and everything involved, I'm going to leave it alone. So I want to put on record for the fact is because he lives, you may get two today. I say 47, but I'd be very careful with because he lives. I'm going to leave it like that. Number 47, you won't count that 46, but 47. Look ye saints, the sight is glorious. By Thomas Kelly. And let's look at a little information about Thomas Kelly. While completing his studies in London, he was convicted of sin through the writings of William Romaine. R-O-M-A-I-N-E. If I'm pronouncing the names wrong, please forgive me. Find that all his efforts to reform were useless. You know, if I could do by works, what can I do for my sins? Useless. He at last obtained peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, and forthwith abandoned the study of law for the preaching of the gospel, and at the early age of 23 became a clergyman in the Church of Ireland. His evangel evangelical preaching led to the Archbishop of Dublin, Dr. Fowler, prohibitation and forbidden any longer to preach in the established church. He left it and with others like-minded taught in various chapels in Ireland, those glorious truths that we find expressed in his hymn. Now watch this, this is the preface in his hymn book. Thomas Kelly writes, and I quote, in his hymn book, it will be perceived by those who read these hymns. Read the hymns. Have I not been telling you that? Have I not just said, just sing the hymns, but read them? Have we not been reading? Thomas Kelly says, hey, don't just sing them. Read them. It will proceed by those who read these hymns that though there is an intro between the first and the last of near 60 years, both speak of the same great truth in the same way. In the course of this, excuse me, of course of that long period, the author has seen much and heard much, but nothing that he has seen or heard was made the least change in his mind that he is conscious of as to the grand truth of the gospel. What pacifies the conscience then does so now. Other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Christ Jesus, end of quote. So look at that. Look where we're going today. So, stanza one. Look ye saints, the sight is glorious. What's the sight of glorious? Graduation, wedding, your, your sports team going to win their big event. Pastor, get up. Your glorious church. What's glorious? What's glorious for you, Christian? What do you want to see? Who do you want to see? That first thought that you had in your heart, that's who you love. And don't go to oh, oh, Jesus. No. What was your first thought? See the man of sorrows now. Where is he now? Seated at the right hand of the Father. All majesty and glory. He's not that man walking around this planet Earth no more. He's not that man who's been bruised and beaten. He's at the right hand of the Father. From the fight return victorious. Every knee to him shall bow. That's the second advent. The writer of this hand, Mr. Kelly, has gone from the suffering servant 
to the victorious return on the white horse, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. We'll get to that in a moment. Crown him. Crown him. Crown him. Crown him. The Bible says in Revelation 19, he comes back with many crowns. Crowns, plural, become the victor's brow. The victor's brow, Jesus' brow. What was that brow when he was on this earth? Sweat. Maybe some Jerusalem dust. Middle East dust. We're going to crown him, crown him. The world crowned him with thorn and blood. He's not coming back as that baby any longer. He's not coming back in peace. He's not coming back in love. Maybe love for the Jewish people. Maybe peace for the Jewish people. But if you are an enemy of God at his second advent, lie in the tribe of Judah. Crown the Savior. Now look how stanza one moves right into stanza two. Crown who? A queen in England? Crown a man to sit in the Oval Office? Lift up the man in, in, in Moscow? Even the Prime Minister of Israel? Lift up my great children? Lift up the great pastor? No, crown the Savior, capital S. That one and only Savior is the one that said, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one Savior. It's the man Christ Jesus who is God. Angel, can't forget them, crown him. Remarkable. God's angels, not the fallen angels, God's angels have been created, never been saved. Always in the presence of God. And they're going to crown the Lord Jesus Christ. Rich the trophies Jesus brings. Trophies. Oh, I got first prize. I got the blue ribbon. Do you see my, my little trophy I got? You see, you know, it's got a soccer ball. It's got a little race car. It's got good diamonds. It's got gold. And pfft, on all that mess. What's the trophies of Jesus Christ? Lost souls who are going to hell have been saved by the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. He was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. The trophies that those who are saved, I am a trophy of Jesus Christ because I am saved. There are going to be people in, in heaven who are going to thank me because I had some kind of work in their salvation. And there are people in heaven I'm going to thank for their work in their lives for my salvation. And all together, we're going to worship the one who saved our souls. We're talking in living trophy. That piece of gold, that piece of plastic, heaven and earth shall depart away. A fervent heat, all that trophy garbage. In the seat of power enthrone him. When we get to New Jerusalem and God the Father and God the Son sit on that throne, we're going to be powered by God. We will not need the sun no more. We will not need the moon. They are the light. They are the ones we go and worship. We're not going to worship the man. I was in church every single time the door was open. Big deal. I was baptized in this river. Big deal. I gave the more money to the church fund. Big deal. I went out and knocked on more doors. Big deal. What's the big deal in having Christ and God seated on the throne? All the angels that follow Satan are gone. Satan is gone. All those that had rejected God are gone. 
Jews will be there that love God for who he is and their Messiah. Nations will be there that put that what God has told them to do. All those that have had their name in the land's book of life will be there. Not of works, any, at least any man boasts. I'm not going to go to heaven and say, look how many YouTube videos I made. I'm going to heaven by the merit of the Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. To all the power and glory be to him. While the vault of heaven rings. Man, just think about that. And that ain't, that ain't bells in heaven. Just ringing out. Imagine. Holy, sinless, perfected bodies. With no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears. With a perfect voice box and perfect, if we got lungs. Lifting up our lips and our tongues without sin to God and Jesus Christ forever, and there'll be no mistakes, there'll be no error. Imagine in unison of all of us at once in unity, glorifying God and Jesus on that throne without any mistakes and no joyful noise. Be joyful celebration. Then crown him. Crown the Savior, King of Kings. Now that's his title when he comes back. That's not the title of the church. When he mounts on that horse, it's King of King and Lord of Lords. It don't say anywhere about president of presidents. You imagine that day when Lord Jesus Christ mounts up and to the people who of Israel who are hidden, who have run from the Antichrist, here, the end of the tribulation period is total darkness. And here comes that light. And you look closer and closer, and you, your eyes are squinting. It's getting, it's dark, it's getting lighter. Oh, my eyes hurt. That looks like a man on a horse. And the people of Israel, the remnant, be glorious. He's here. He's finally here. Shalom. And those that rejected him, those that are against him. Oh, rocks fall on us, mountain hide us, and they're throwing their idols in the dirt, in the grave. Like, uh. King of kings. Queen Victoria said, I would give up my throne and my crown if Jesus Christ would now. Sinners. Sinners, that's me. And derision, that's mockery, ridicule, scorn him. I scorned him before I was saved. I used his name in vain before I was saved. But April 21st, 1987, in the afternoon, I don't know what time I took that name of Jesus Christ. I turned that into my salvation. I turned that to be my savior. Not a name of cursing, not of mockery, not of ridicule, but of a name of pardon. The name and the gospel and the blood of Jesus Christ washed away my sins and placed my name in the Lamb's book of life and the Holy Spirit came and dwelled with me and I became a child of God. Mocking thus the Savior's claim. What's, what's the Savior's claim? What do they mock? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Ha <laughs> ha, you phony baloney, you religious nut. I've got my religion. All is well, there is no hell. Oh, death is, you know, you just die and that's it. This is hell right now. This, this what I'm living right now is hell. That's mocking the Savior's claim. I'm okay. I'm a good person. That's not what the Bible would do. That's not what Jesus would do. That's mocking. And if you've been in any public ministry, any shape or form you have heard that mocking you have heard times of foul mouth cussing you have heard little people you know come up to you and they got great boldness to say you're not doing it the way the bible and they never open the pages mocking what christ has done for us shame 
saints and angels. I'm a saint and I'm not dead. The Catholic Church doctrine of the saint is someone who's been who is who has died and the Pope or somebody does some kind of thing for them and they become a saint. That's absolutely ridiculous. Saints are dead and alive. I'm saint right now, and when I die, I'll be saint. My grandma and grandpa were saved. They're saints in the grave. They were saints alive. Saints and angels. It doesn't say the devil and his angels. It don't say lost men. We're going to a place where those who don't want Christ are not allowed and won't be allowed to enter. And you're not going to bring your brokenness. You're not going to bring your junk. You will not have your sin. Saints and angels. Imagine the angels that do follow God and stay with God. Going to be communicating. Going to be worshiping God with us. Bible says, do you not know that we shall judge angels? We will have story to tell angels about how we lived in this flesh. And the great story that Christ had upon us of saving our soul. Because no Christian, absolutely no Christian has two stories alike. I'm sorry, but no Christian like Stiley Haver, let me speak about myself, has ever gotten saved and knelt down at a coffee table and received Christ as his Savior and heaven lit up. The Bible says the angels rejoice in Luke 15. And I am saved. My name's the Lamb's Book of Life and have my grandmother get mad because we moved her table centerpiece. I don't think that happened quite often. And there are all the stories of all the saved people on how they came to Christ and know Christ as their Savior. And we will be telling to angels how Christ, the one that is seated on that throne that is still marred, uh, let me tell you, angel, and God said he has names for them. Let me tell you how that one on the seat up there, the, the, the Lord God, Savior of all the earth, let me tell you what he done for me. That's going to be a jubilation. Imagine the angels telling us stories how God's forever been on the throne. Angels haven't been forever. There was a time that God in his, for, in his for, foreverness said, I'm going to create angels. And maybe there'll be angels in heaven say, you know, when you were living as a Christian, this is what was going on. You know how many times the devil came up accusing you, like Job 1 and 2? You know how many times we, we, we cheered when you witnessed to somebody? Crown around him. Crowd around. You know the crowd around Jesus in glory is angels and saints that are saved and are not of sin, not of wickedness. They are not their father, the devil. They are the father, God. Angels are called uh, sons of man, sons of God. Genesis, you know, where they say that, you know, they're, I think Genesis 9 would say those are the children of Shem or something. I, no, they're the angels. Own his title. Praise his name. What, what's Jesus' title to me? King of kings? No. Lord of lords? No. He's my savior. He's my friend. He is God. Jehovah Witnesses can't say that. Jehovah Witnesses can't say he's God. They don't believe he's God. Praise his name. Not a human name. The name of Jesus, which means Jehovah saved. Forever, forever, the name of Jesus, Jehovah saved. There are churches out there, praise our pastor's name. Praise our church day. Praise me. You know what the Bible says about us? We're going to get a new name. A new name. Spread abroad the victor's fame. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. That's it. What, I, I, what do I tell people? Tell them how you got saved. 
tell them what Christ has done for you. It's that simple. Heart, the burst of activation, shouts. Oh, the glory of sinlessness, the glory of a glorified body, the holiness that we will have in the heaven also. We're going to cheer Jesus. You know, they, 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 there's a, a football stadium, who cares where, but you know, when the when the, the the opposing team is on one one side of this field, if all those fans against that team cheer at this section of the of the stadium, you, know, you can't hear nothing, and they will cheer purposely so that to, to make the enemy team or the opposing team you know can't think and try to make them lose and and distract the team. You may know that stadium. I don't want to know it. Who cares? I know the story. When we get the glory, we're before God. We're going to cheer on Jesus. It'll be a praise at what Jesus has done for us. It won't be for a football. It won't be for a basketball. It won't be for baseball. It will be for Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Praise his name. Spread abroad the victor's ring. Tell everyone. Oh, I lost my place. Heart those loud triumphal chorus. Chorus. Again, when we are in glory, we have a sinless, perfected body that is perfect, and there will be no make a joyful noise. It will be make a joyful acclamation, make a joyful sound. It will come out. It will be perfect. It will be to the greatest importance to Jesus. Heaven's going to ring the hymn sing, says. Heaven's going to sound out a beauty. The one that the Bible says there's no beauty that we should desire. Him. Jesus takes the highest station. I was a deacon of a church. Who cares? I was the pastor. Who cares? I had more people. Who cares? You got more people? God's got more people. All those that are saved are God's. How can you outdo God? You're going to have a congregation more than those that are truly saved? Who cares to you? We're in glory. We're to heaven by Jesus Christ. He's the one. Oh, what joy. Oh, what joy. Sinless, again, perfected. Perf perfect joy. Joy in heaven that will never, ever, ever go away. I got the joy, joy, joy down deep in my heart. And then you open up the mail get a bad letter. You open up the mail, you get a, a bill that you thought... Is a lot higher than it is. I get the joy, you get a phone call. That's not going to happen in heaven. Satan will not be there to ruin our joy no more when we get to glory. And joy is one of the fruits of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will be there. His joy will be forever as we forever before God and the Son. Oh, what joy the sight affords. What sight? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, right there in front of our eyes, right there taking care of us forever. Never, ever to leave our eyesight again. Never, ever to have that light go out. Never, ever to have darkness. Forever. There he is, the one I've been looking for. The one that I have been unfaithful to. The one that I have not done all that I should be doing. There he is, forever the faithful. Glorious. King of King and Lord of Lords. That title belongs to the second advent, to Jesus Christ, King, on David's throne in the millennium, now has gathered the nation of Israel together. You think God's finished with Israel? You're a liar. You think God's all done with Israel? You're of Satan. 
Israel still will be and going to be the apple of God's eye forever. Glory to God in the highest. Wait for what joy will get.